Two U.S. officials tell CBS News that Iran launched missiles towards Israel in addition to drones in a retaliatory attack. There are reports of explosions and apparent intercepts across Israel, including Tel Aviv and the West Bank. Natalie Brand is at the White House tonight. Natalie, uh, what can you tell us about the White House response? Well, I can tell you at this hour, Michael, the president still appears to be at work because there's still a Marine standing guard outside the Oval Office. We know uh, that a U.S. official confirmed to CBS News that the president would be speaking to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu following this meeting that uh, the president convened with his national security team and top administration officials from the Secretary of Defense to the Secretary of State, uh, top intelligence leaders, military leaders, uh, and more. We know that that meeting lasted roughly two hours. Uh, it was convened ahead of this attack on Israel beginning to unfold. Uh, and the U.S., the president actually putting out a picture of that meeting inside uh, the Situation Room and reiterating the message that U.S. support for Israel and its defense remains ironclad. And to that end, uh, we know that the U.S. positioned, moved assets closer to Israel uh, ahead of this to be in position to help intercept uh, some of these, the drones and incoming um, from Iran. We know a Navy destroyer had been repositioned closer to Israel. Fighter jets were on standby. And so we've seen the United States help Israel uh, come to its aid when it comes to self-defense. And at the same time, behind the scenes, diplomatically, really try to reduce tensions in the region uh, communicating through intermediaries with Iran as everyone is hoping that this does not escalate further. Uh, no one wants to see a further widening uh, or an all-out regional conflict here. Yeah, Natalie, you bring up a good point because I think there's so much concern right now that this could escalate and draw the U.S. into it. Is the U.S. also having conversations about de-escalation with Israel because we don't yet know how Israel will respond to this? Exactly. And that's the big questions. That's the uh, aspect that regional experts are watching. Uh, and one expert on the region from the Middle East Institute pointed out that the Iranian regime doesn't know whether the Biden administration has the political influence over Prime Minister Netanyahu to try to uh, reduce a potential uh, retaliation for what Iran has done. And what remains to be seen at this hour uh, is what is the ultimate outcome of this attack? Obviously, news is still developing. Uh, we do not know the final picture of this. So what does that end up being and how Israel will respond could determine a lot about what happens next in the region. Natalie, in the but last, it, in, in mm -hmm. recent days, uh, uh, the U.S. relations with Israel have been strained, especially after that uh, Israeli drone strike that, that killed several aid workers. Uh, right. Have you noticed a difference in tone tonight? It seems like there is a tone of reaffirming that longstanding friendship with Israel. What's, what, what can you tell us about the tone that you're hearing? Absolutely. Uh, you bring up a great point. Just a week ago, we heard the White House and President Biden uh, issuing some of his strongest, sharpest criticism, strong words for Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, because of rising civilian casualties in Gaza, the strike that killed the aid workers from World Central Kitchen. Fast forward a week and we are hearing nothing but this unwavering support uh, and message to Iran that the U.S. will stand uh, next to Israel in defense and guard against threats from Iran, and the message from the president that Iran will not succeed. Just yesterday on Friday, uh, the president warned Iran, don't, don't go forward uh, with this attack. Uh, but now that it's happened, again, we're hearing from the White House, from congressional leaders, uh, a message of unwavering support and congressional leaders, some uh, Republicans also calling uh, for Iran to be held accountable. But 
again, a lot of what happens next will determine, will be based on uh, and determined by what we know about the outcome of this attack and again, what the next steps in the region are. Natalie Brand at the White House, thanks. We want to bring in CBS News national security contributor Sam Vinograd. She is the former assistant secretary for counterterrorism. Uh, Sam, how does Israel respond to this? What are their likely next steps? Well, I think Israel is considering its likely next steps to include uh, retaliatory strikes directly in Iran, as well as retaliatory strikes against proxies in the region. But we have to remember that Israel is also going to be looking to what the international community is going to do. Um, the G7 countries, for example, have considered in the past uh, imposing even stricter sanctions on Iran's ballistic missile program, for example, sanctioning more Iranian airlines for their uh, involvement with Iran's uh, weapons program. So it, while Israel considers what it's going to do to respond, it will also be looking to see what the international community is willing to do. We know that any action by the UN Security Council is very unlikely because Russia is on the Security Council and will not do anything to upset Iran. But there are additional measures that be taken from a sanctions perspective by the international community while Israel reviews um, its own military plans. And the, the issue here, of course, is that Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, knows that Israel has been attacked. It is a fact. Israel has been attacked. At the same time, further escalating this crisis will further strain the Israeli Defense Forces, which have been fighting in Gaza for six months, as well as additional uh, conflicts on their northern border and elsewhere. But he's under enormous um, pressure right now to do something. The question is how big that something will be. Uh, we've seen that the U.S. has moved resources to that region in anticipation of this attack. We've also heard that uh, the U.S. has intercepted some of those drones that were on their way to Israel. How do you expect the U.S. to back Israel going forward in the coming days? Well, it's notable that it's not just the United States that moved assets to the region to provide for Israel's defense. We also saw Arab countries get involved in messaging to Iran not to over-calibrate its response, in addition to a range of uh, countries like the U.K., uh, and others. So we've seen an international coalition to include Arab countries come together to message to Iran. And so the United States right now is undoubtedly reviewing what other military assets may be needed in the region to deter any further escalation, whether there are, for example, additional naval carriers that may be warranted or whether if any resources remain, any additional air defense assets that can be moved to the region if we think that this conflict could spread. But those conversations, based on my experience um, in the White House for four years, would be conducted in very close collaboration with partners, um, including the Jordanians, the Saudis, and others to ascertain what they have on the ground, what they're willing to make available, um, so that this is a shared coalition effort and it's not just the U.S. and Israel doing this. We've heard Iran claim that the their attack is over for the moment. Uh, what what's your assessment of that? Is this a, is this a regime that can be uh, trusted to be honest in situations like this? I don't think anything that the Iranian regime says at face value. I am hopeful that this is uh, the only stage of retaliation by the regime in Tehran. What we don't know is if they will activate their proxies in the region to continue out other stages of this retaliation, or if they're planning something else themselves. But I, would, I wouldn't put much credence in what the Iranian regime says. We have to wait and see. And I wanna talk about the U.S. response as well. I know that a lot of people are concerned about escalation. So how does the U.S. balance this? Are they, do they say, are they, are they talking to Iran? Are they talking to Israel? How, how do they move forward here and keep the temperatures low? This is a multi-pronged diplomatic effort, just even when we think about Iran. The United States does not have direct communications uh, with Iran. The United States does communicate with Iran through intermediaries, and this administration has acknowledged that that has happened. Um, there is reporting to suggest that Brett McGurk, uh, the senior coordinator for the Middle East, delivered a message to the Iranians through um, the Omanis. We also know that the Swiss serve as our um, intermediary very typically with the Iranians. That channel is active. And the United States placed a series of calls to allies and even China around the world 
urging them to urge Iran not to overcalibrate. And the same would be true as it pertains to Israel. The United States is speaking to Israel, urging them to think about what comes next while providing for Israel's defense. And I would imagine that other allies and partners are being asked to send the same message. Sam, I want to give some perspective to this situation. Iran has targeted Israel before through proxies, but this is the first time they've actively by themselves taken this kind of military action directly against Israel. How significant is this to you? This is an unprecedented and terrifying moment. Israel has been attacked directly by the regime in Tehran for the first time in the history of the state of Israel. However, we are hopeful that the Iranian regime's response is calibrated and that it will end tonight. But that does not mean that this isn't a terrifying moment for the state of Israel. It does show the efficacy of Israel's multi-layered air defense system, as well as the incredibly broad and deep security partnerships that Israel has built with countries around the world, like the United States, and more recently with Arab countries that have stepped in um, in the last week or so to try to de-escalate the situation. Sam Vinaigrette, thanks so much for joining us. 